Well, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Very honored. Very honored. Very honored. Yeah. Is that the Foreign Minister, Mr. President? The President. Oh, pleasure to meet you, sir. Right on. Right on. Right on. And then, then you, Ambassador. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you and I are going to sit in those chairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a three waves, I think, of you can't get them all in at once. <laughs> and so we'll have to kind of small talk if they're very small. And then we can get down to the business of the day. I warned you, Mr. President, that there are a lot of impolite people in the press who shout questions. Yeah. And he doesn't have to answer any of them. Well, very happy to be able to come to Washington to have a chance to meet you. We Costa Ricans like this country very much. We admire you quite a lot. Costa Ricans always remember your visit to my predecessor that was, yes, well, that's four years ago, certainly. I was, uh, I have lived in this country as a student. I attended Boston University for a while. Then I had the opportunity to go to England, that's where I learned my English. I got a PhD in political science, which doesn't help much. This is a country where I am very very grateful to for my use of Thank you. This way, please. This way, please. Well, it's so impressive to be here in this famous office. I never came as a tourist, so this is my first opportunity to get a white house. Thank you, Vice President. Thank you. This way, please. Thank you. No, no, no. You knew you, you, you were going to be short. to the files or papers or time for preparation for questions have done just exactly the same thing so that they can then be witnesses for the investigation. Well, sir, are you going to direct members of your cabinet uh, not to uh, take the Fifth Amendment? Mr. Durberger has said that he would like them to testify. What is your feeling? Mm -hmm. The individuals will have to make that decision for themselves, just as these two have, as to what they feel they're 
situation is with regard to the ongoing. You're not going to protect them with executive privilege, is that correct, sir? I haven't given any thought to that. This way, please. Thank you. Okay, this way, please. Thank you. This way, please. This way, please. This way, please. Let's go. This way, we talk about today. Oh, many ideas. Let's go. Many, many. Well, Central America. Thank you. The future of democracy in the region. Thank you. And also. I'm interested in my way, own please. Thank you. and its future economic development. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, this is the same all over, all over the world. And mainly, we're interested in this. We also support in Costa Rica. I imagine here it's uh, some sort of uh, the fourth power in this country, and also in all three societies, and so they are quite aggressive. We all believe in freedom now, so we see the response to freedom. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So it's without responsibility, freedom is not righteous. Hello. 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 I think we're in agreement that democracy in Nicaragua is required if uh, we're going to have peace in the future. And uh, there's, there's no question. What we hope for, what our support in Congress is all about, is based on the need for democratization, which was the theme of the revolution when uh, they were fighting for the overthrow of Somoza. And could I, could I ask one thing regarding you, because you are one of the Latin American countries, and you're a little self-conscious. We know that there still is some memory about the great colossus of the North, when maybe we did things years ago that were not the proper thing to do. I think we changed. And, uh, I have told President Arias in the other room about the long friendship between our two democracies, but he was also telling me about it from your standpoint. So I think we have in common uh, a real affection between our two countries and uh, a relationship that is based on your great democracy. Our efforts at democracy, too. I, uh, I think of your country as a valued ally shown real courage in your approach to the Sandinistas to call for democracy for the other states of America. I, uh, our feeling is not one as so many try to imply that we want to come in and conquer or overthrow. No.
It's been a great pleasure to welcome President Arias and distinguished members of his government here today. The goodwill evident in our meetings underscores the enduring bond between our countries and between all peoples who cherish democracy and human freedom. Costa Rica and the United States stand together four square in our commitment to democracy 
has been replaced for the most part by the promise of tomorrow. Leadership in Nicaragua, where a totalitarian expansionist regime violates the human rights of its people and threatens the peace and freedom of its neighbors. On land, seeking safety in Costa Rica and the Honduras. This challenge cannot be ignored without its totalitarianism next door. As the leader of the region's oldest and strongest democracy, your words have special significance and carry moral weight. As you've said, Congress and the American people, the establishment of a Soviet beachhead in the mainland of the Americas, a base camp for terrorism and the subversion of democracy, remains unacceptable, remains unflinching. Costa Ricans and the other free people of Central America can have faith that they will not be abandoned in the face of this and respect have been hallmarks of the U.S.-Costa Rican relationship for many years. Our discussions today reaffirmed that our relations will continue on a high note. Mr. President, I am very pleased by this frank and sincere dialogue. The discussion of the North by oppression and violence my country is not a party to the problems of Central America, but the peoples. Accordingly, we have proposed an alliance for freedom and democracy. Only if we endeavor to enable all peoples to enjoy democracy, we aspire to higher levels of development. Only the absence of extreme poverty is a guarantee of peace and a shield against violence. We wish, Nami, Today, more than ever, we must strive for gener general well-being and prevent the spread of poverty. Today, more than ever, we must to freedom. Today, more than ever, we must direct our sacrifices with a full sense of history. Today, more than ever, we need international solidarity and fair treatment in trust in the democracies of the America. There must be a commitment from the Western world to strengthen democracy in all our nations. Working together for democracy, freedom and development is working together for peace. Mr. President, once again, I wish to tell you how pleased I am with the numerous areas of agreement in our talks. I leave convinced that this ongoing dialogue between ourselves. President, do you agree with the Vice President that mistakes were made in your Iranian policy, sir? Well, do you think the Congress of Aid is now uh, badly damaged by the scandal? What do you think about me deserting you? <laughs> 